He was drunk. He told me I'm siding with my mom. Then he took it out on my mom. Mm -hmm. Then he went. Hello viewers. Welcome to uh, today's show, This is Things Untold, with me, Auntie Marge. Uh, on our previous show, we, we talked about PTSD, that is post-traumatic stress disorder. And of course, with me today is a teen who has gone through the same, and she's here to speak of herself and, of course, on behalf of others. And uh, the reason why she's here, it's be simply because we want other teenagers out there to know, like, uh, like probably what you're going through is normal. And of course, you're not the only person who is going through the same. And of course, for parents to understand that some of your actions, some of your deeds are affecting your young ones, and at least you can work within yourself and know how you can go about it uh, to avoid them being affected and probably feeling the way we do. And with no further ado, I'm going to welcome her and give her an opportunity to introduce herself. Karibu sana. Santi. My name is Stella Amboi. I finished Form 4 this year, and um. I'm planning to go to university on September. Yes. Karibu sana. Thank you. Karibu sana hapa, Wema TV. Mm. And I'm glad to honor the invitation. Eh? Mm. So for a start, I just want us to give us like, an honor. Okay, the, on our previous show, we had talked about PTSD, yeah, of which I know you have gone through. Mm. And uh, of course, you have been to classes whereby you've been taught like what it's all about, you know, how people behave, how they respond, and uh, that is why you're here. Of course, to give your story, and of course, educate other teenagers out there, and of course, parents as well, because they need to learn, like uh, most of the things that they do, like how those things affect you as young people, so at least they can know what to go about it, and uh, teach them, and uh, like mind your feelings as well. So, so, so for a start, like, have you gone through PTSD? I can say I have. Uh -huh. in, in which area? In my parents' area, mm -hmm. about at home. Mm -hmm. I can say it was abusive, mm -hmm. but not physically, mm -hmm. verbally. Okay. Yes. My parents used to fight a lot, mm -hmm. and then they separate, then they come back together, mm -hmm. and it used to affect me, mm -hmm. like in a big deal, especially when I go to school, because... I was in a boarding in Nakuru. Okay. Yes, no, and I have a little sister, mm -hmm. and also her, she witnesses the, the abusive thing, mm -hmm. and it used to stress me, especially when I leave her there, mm -hmm. with, like, with no one to like, tell her it's going to be okay. When I go to school, I didn't choose to concentrate that much, because I wanted to just go home, stay with my sister, help out at least because what was going on it was not that well mm -hmm. yeah. okay what ex okay thank you so much first of all let me appreciate for sharing your story with us and of course to like the entire world at least to know like how these things are uh, affect you people now okay what exactly what what was affecting you the most is it the the verbal abuse you know is it knowing that probably your sister is there within and you being there what hurted you the most or what made you like uh, feel the need of just wanting to be home like all times actually i didn't want to be home because mm -hmm. of the verbal abuse mm -hmm. i just wanted to be there for my sister but not at home because mm -hmm. at that point it didn't feel like a home because i wasn't comfortable there you know when your parents fight mm -hmm. it's not a good thing okay. for someone to see mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't want to go home. It used to affect me a lot. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever probably for a single day try talking to your parents, like make, letting them know like how their actions make you feel? Yeah, once. Mm -hmm. How did it go? It sounded as if I was being disrespectful. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It sounded as if I was being... I didn't know if it's how I put it. But for them, it sounded as if it was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how who who took it harshly the most? My dad. Your dad. Yes. Mm -hmm. How did he go about it? Well, he used to drink. Mm -hmm. Now, when I told him at that point, he was drunk, mm -hmm. and he told me I'm siding with my mom because mm -hmm. my mom like. She ha she provides for us mostly. Mm -hmm. Now she, he was saying I'm siding with my mom, and 
I, he took it badly then he took it out on my mom mm -hmm. and it became a big issue mm -hmm. then he went mm -hmm. and stayed for a long time mm -hmm. then he came back okay mm -hmm. so basically he didn't take it well mm -hmm. and he just felt like you were taking sides yeah. at that particular moment because probably mommy was doing more than he was doing himself and so that is the reason why you were taking sides eh? yeah okay uh just to respond on that huh? uh at times yeah it happens and at times like we, we are like you being like a, like a young person you always feel like you want to be part like you always feel like there's something you can do but many a times you just find like there's nothing there's n like nothing much you can do you know because they are fighting they have their own issues they know the root they know the cause they know like where it is started but you as the young person you have no idea you don't know where those fights came from. So as much as you feel like there's something you can do, I just want you people to understand you and of course other teenagers who are going through the same out there. Like there's nothing much you can do. The only thing you can do is to focus on yourself. You know, because at the end of it, yeah, it's hurting. You know, it's demoralizing, yeah. You know, and of course it will make you feel like you don't want to be there, like just you have said, like you do want to be home. And that home is no longer a home. It turns to be a house. You know, it's just a house whereby, like, you go, there's a roof over your head, no cold, you know, you're there, you cannot be attacked and all that. It is no longer a home but a, but a house. And deep down inside you, you just keep feeling as if, like, you can turn it to be a home. But I want you to understand today, okay, what you did was the right thing based on how you felt at that particular time, regardless of how dad took it. You know, that was his opinion. And he always say that. Uh, in life is not about other people's opinion, it's about your opinion. That is how you felt at that particular time. But for the sake of next time, uh, I would love you to understand that there's nothing much you can do in that whole situation because it is their issue and they are the only people who are, they are, they are the only people who have a solution to it. And of course, the moment you try to intervene, they will always feel the same way your dad felt. So how she, he felt was not abnormal. It was very normal. He felt like, they were disrespected and of course you got into their space as much as they are also into your space because when they are there's this verbal abuse they are they are verbally insulting each other in front of you you know they're getting into your space so you got into their space but now that because their parents are they are grown up they always feel disrespected so it is always good to maintain to keep distance watch from a distance not unless there's harm you know there's a place whereby maybe they want to hit each other you know killing each other that is the time you can intervene and not you being there but at least seeking for assistance you can either call a neighbor you can call a friend you know mm -hmm. somebody who know that can be there that particular you can intervene through others but not you through you directly because you directly seems like you you're disrespecting them so it is always good to do that through other other areas you can seek, look for a friend like daddy's friend mommy's friend you know a pastor in church if it is comfortable anywhere else but you doing it yourself most it will be taken like a being disrespectful and it will not, it will not go well. But what you did is not abnormal. I'm not here at it to make you feel like what you did was wrong. You did the right thing because that is how you felt at that particular time. And it is very okay how you did it, regardless of how it was taken. And uh, it was well. That shows a sign of like you being courageous, of course, and of course having enough, like you have, like you just felt like that was enough and you, you needed and you needed and you needed a change. So um, according to the way you're talking, I hear you say like, uh, like you're talking like in past, like it was there, it is no longer there. Does it mean like it no longer happens nowadays? Well, it, it stopped, mm -hmm. but not completely. Mm -hmm. They're trying. Mm -hmm. Let me say they're trying. Okay. Because when dad went, I think he went to work on himself. Oh, so they have back. separated now. Or oh, it has stopped because there is separation. Eh. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, they, it stopped because of the separation. Mm -hmm. But he's back. Mm -hmm. And it's, it has not stopped, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. It stopped because they were not together at that time. Mm -hmm. Now they're back together. But right now it's not like in the past. Mm -hmm. It's kind of down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they are still working on themselves. Yes. How does that affect, how does that make you feel? Now that he was no longer there and things were better, now he's coming back, their, their abuse is still there, even though, even though it is not as much as it used to be. How, how does that make you feel? For me, I, wanted, I didn't want him to go. Mm -hmm. 
I really want them to work themselves out. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he went, it wasn't a nice feeling. Okay, for you. Yeah, it wasn't How a nice feeling. How did that make you feel him leaving? I, I, was, I thought it was my fault mm -hmm. uh, for him leaving. And mm -hmm. I, I was saying I, it's just better if I keep quiet. But mom told me that he's going to work on himself. He, then he'll come back. And then when he came back, I thought things was going to be better. But no, but he's trying. Mm -hmm. mm. So, okay, his leaving really did affect you. Yes. As much as he, the, he was being abusive, but mm -hmm. he's going did a, what what like what exactly did affect him? He, is, is it him living? Yes, not uh, that. At he, I will miss him. Yeah, I did miss him, mm -hmm. but I felt like I'm the one who drove him away. Mm -hmm. By what I sense? Talked. Oh, the mo the moment you ask the question, you uh, did ask. Mm -hmm. Now it affected me because I felt it was my fault. Mm -hmm. When he's going, he's going to blame me that I'm Amanda Kisema. My my daughter doesn't respect me. Mm -hmm. yes. that's, okay. Yeah, that's what affected me. Oh, the, what affected you the most is the fact that you felt like what you did is the one that drove him away. Yeah. Okay. It is okay at times to feel that way. And uh, there's nothing abnormal in you feeling the way you felt. Uh, but believe you me, you're not to blame. And you're not the reason why he walked away. You know, we say life, it's all about the choices that we make and, of course, our way of thinking. You know, he would have chosen to stay he would have, if he would have wanted, and, of course, he can choose not to abuse. Because, you know, the verbal abuse, the insults, sio lazima, sinukwele. He can choose to keep quiet. He can choose not to insult, regardless of the, the push. At times they say, he pushed me, she pushed me, you know, she did this, she did that. You know, you can choose. Uh, there are so many other options. To choose not necessarily like walking away the other uh, other options like he would have chosen but out of all those options like keep it quiet you know making peace because even the bible tells us that the men are the head of the home and they are the one to make the, that homestead do what start be farm be okay and all that mm -hmm. but for him he chose to walk away it had absolutely nothing to do with you so for today, I want you, if you still blame yourself for him leaving, today I want you to understand and to know that it had absolutely nothing to do with you. That was his choices. That is what he chose. And he's responsible for those, for the choices. As much as it affected you as a person, but I want you to under, let you understand today that you, what you did, you know, you did it out of goodwill. You know, you said it because you wanted the best for them. And of course, he chose to leave. He would have chosen to take you and of course have a sitting with you and have a conversation like have a daughter daddy daughter conversation you know and of course let he, he expresses like how that did make him feel and of course like next time maybe you can try to do it better mm -hmm. if it is done better it will make me feel a little better not disrespected but out of those choices he chose to do what to walk away so you're not responsible for his walking away and of course don't feel guilty about it Cindy. Yes. yeah you're only responsible for yourself. Since you're taking care of yourself, focusing on you, because uh, we say that that is how you know how to love yourself. You know, when you focus on you, focus on that, what that empowers you, you know, that is a negative energy. I always tell the young people, if something is not adding value to your life, it is not worth your time. You know, if it is not adding value to you, to your life, it is not worth your time. So if you realize like this is very negative energy on my side, you can try to come off to stay away from that energy and try to focus on other things and more on you and on, on the positive side. If it weighs so harshly on you, I always tell people you can either find a counselor you can talk to, you can go to a church and if not your church because probably you just don't feel comfortable like where you fellowship, you can go to any church, you know, walk in, say like you just feel like you need to talk to someone and of course they will give you someone you can talk to and that one will be, but you're not to blame. And I want you to know that, and if there's any other teenager going, going through the same situation, feeling the guilt and all that, they need to understand that they are not responsible for that. You're only responsible for your own actions. You're not responsible for other people's actions. How people choose to live their life is definitely not your responsibility, regardless of what you did or what you said. You know, because they can choose to view things differently. If only people would focus on the positive, 
and forget the negatives. The whole story will be, will be totally different. So, in school, did the abuse change you? How, like, how the abuse, did it change you like the way you view things? Like, um, how you used to take life? Has it changed you as a person? Well, I can say that it, I only, when I was in school, I was mm -hmm. thinking about Achatu Nisome, Ndiyo Nitoese Rapu. As in, I was saying that I have to have a good life to give my sister a good life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how it changed me. Mm -hmm. I can say that's the only positive thing that that thing gave to me. Okay, so mm. it gave you the psych to work so hard mm. to make sure your sister doesn't go through the same. You just felt the need to work hard and don't try at all. Like umpeleke umpe are totally different. At least that is a positive thing and I'm happy that yeah, it did. The whole situation, it is not a good thing, but at least it motivated you and of course gave you the psych to work even more harder in school to do better, mm. you know, so that at least you can have a good life for for your sister. What about in a negative way? Is there, did it impact you negatively? I I felt like hopeless. I didn't say my evil. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't used to talk to people mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. especially older people. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I didn't trust anyone that mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. I think I shut everybody out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So after all that, you just find yourself like you wanted to be alone. Yes. You don't want to be around people. You just want to be in your own Because when, mm. when they're in school and you're around people, they tell you stories about their home mm -hmm. and you don't have a good thing to tell them. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't want to be around people mm -hmm. because of that. Okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. And of course, it is okay. And it is normal to feel that way. Mostly when probably somebody is going through such a such a situation but uh, the moment the reason why like most young people or most people feel that way because not probably like young people even like grown at times grown people feel the same way the same way and of course they, they isolate themselves it's simply because you, you're taking it as, as as if it is your responsibility you know like earlier you had said you felt like you're the reason mm -hmm. why he walked out you know the moment you feel that and you take you start taking responsibility for that whole scenario, it makes you feel like you don't belong there. You don't want to be around people. You know, don't stay with them. You just want to be alone. But those feelings are very normal. And of course, they are caused by, it is after a traumatic situation, what your body reacts to that trauma. And that is why we are talking about post-traumatic stress yes. disorder. You know, those are some of the things that usually happen. You don't want to be around people. You feel hopeless. You know, just feel like you don't belong anywhere. You don't want to, to interact with people. You know, you just want to be alone. At times you don't you don't you can't even sleep. You just feel like you go to bed, you're just thinking about everything that is happening. It is always good to understand that you're not responsible. And you shouldn't be taking responsibility. It will weigh down on you, yes, but it is always good to keep telling yourself. I always tell people, you can even go to the mirror, you know, assume like you're talking, that other person the other, you know, that reflection of the mirror, it's mm. another person you're talking to, or you're talking to yourself and telling yourself like positive vibes. Like, just tell yourself like positive things. Yeah, I'm not responsible, and the fact that it's going on like this doesn't mean it will be the same with me. You know, those negative feelings that you have in you, you turn them into into a positive, and you speak them loud. You know, unaziongea kwa nguvu, unaziambia, yeah, I can make it. I'm not the reason why. He left. You know, if you feel useless, tell yourself that I'm not useless because of A, B, C, D, this and this and all that. Mm -hmm. You see, you speak positive in yourself, like feed yourself with like positive vibes. And of course, when you do so, it will be easy for you to like get out of that situation. Not like completely, but it will make the situation more lighter and more easier rather than when you carry that burden as if niyako. So no, na, how are you these are the choices they have made for their lives, of which they can choose differently if they want. Because most of the time we find that if it is daddy who is insulting mommy, mommy also responds and make the whole situation even, even worse. But one of them can choose to keep quiet. You know, and of course, when one of them chooses to keep quiet, it changes the whole situation. Because when you are not going to be able to do it, you are not going to be able to do it. You know, I realize like, 
there's no response, you know, yeah. nothing happens. And so in Kifanya Nini, so me, I say their choices and their choices that have been made by both of them based on the situations and you wow and you wanna Okay, they say for her will work pigana yes in do mea, but you can choose not to go mea by feeding yourself with that. And the positive vibes, making sure una jazz una jazzushiate na watu. When you are kwa like mature people, always say like people who are older than you are, don't mm. be in the same age bracket with you when you're going through such situation because uh, they will make you feel worse. They will make you feel like what you're going through is not normal. No, no. Mm. Of which it is normal. When it happens, you go through all those situations. But so it is always good to engage and of course communicate. Make sure you don't isolate yourself. Don't feel as if you're the only person who is going through that, that situation. There are so many others. The only difference is like how long they appear. But if you can choose to talk, you also motivate them to talk okay. and so you share and the moment you share you realize oh i'm not the only person who is going through better still instead nowadays we are in the area whereby there is a lot of like uh, you're googling and all that you can go and google you know read empower yourself we say information is power the moment you have the information that we study according to google like is we to like the young generation like google at all times it is always the good to go like una google try to know like if i'm going through this kind of situation how do i go about it you know, how do I deal? How do I respond? You know, how do I, do I handle myself? And so when you do that, you have the information. And you say information in power. So even in that kind of situation, you always have the information on how to go, to go about it. And of course, when you feel empowered, you feel more stronger. You know, at a educate when you sit easier. So Googling is it still okay when you empower yourself with, with the information. So what's up? Yeah. How is your sister right now? She's okay. She's fine. Uh, How are you people doing now? Right now, mm -hmm. at the home, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's... No, I'm talking about food. you as well. Me and Sarah. Yeah, you and, and your sister. How now is the situation? Is it better now that... I'm home. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is, the situation is a little better. And yeah. you prefer it being like that. Ama, you'd want it uh, to change. Would you want, like, now they come and be together as a family, regardless of, like, those insults? Ama, you'd wish, like... Work we separated. Separated. It is better when they are separated. Uh, it they work on themselves and then by the time they are coming back together. Work with our work with our. Mm. Have you ever has mommy ever have you ever, do you talk do you have a conversation with your mom? Mm. You do. Mm. Has she ever tried probably going for counselling? Mm. Any of that? I don't think so. Okay, now that you know, it is okay. Like, you can talk to her and let her understand and know the importance of probably doing, like, having, like, counseling sessions. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that can help because now even how when she has the information, it will be easy for her to know how to handle that. Now that even when she comes, like, even when he comes back home, you know, there will be no those escalations. Mm -hmm. So, because at least the moment she goes for counseling, counseling will help her. It will get her empowered. You know, him say dear kujijua kujelewa like any nani. What do I want for this life? How do I handle such situations? No, no. Mm. So that even when he comes, the whole situation will be different. Ata we handle and all that. So, so. Yeah. I don't know if you have a question you'd really like to ask before we uh, we wind up because of time. Mm. Okay. So thank you so much for being here today. And I'm so looking forward to hosting you next time. So, Thank, so, you for so, so. Thank you so much, our viewers. That is all we had for today. Today, we, okay, we were talking about now PTSD, of course, with the, one of our teenagers' experience, like how it has affected her as a person and uh, how it made her feel. And I'm glad that she even had the courage to come here and share, at least to help other teenagers out there who are going through the similar situation for them to understand that it is normal. Maybe you might be there seated and thinking like uh, what I'm going through, like how I feel. I'm feeling this all by myself. So we are here to let you know that, yeah, it is normal and it is okay to feel the way you're feeling. And of course, how, what you're feeling has a name. It is called PTSD. It is post-traumatic stress disorder. And it is okay to be out there. Don't isolate yourself. Don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself with depression and all that. It is okay to be out there. Try to talk to someone, mostly an elderly person. Of course, they are going to journey with you. If you have a, uh, you have, you can access a counselor or a therapist. It is okay too to talk to them, and of course, they will stand with you and will help you out of what you are going through, and you'll be fine and you'll be okay. That is all we have for today. Until next time, 
goodbye.